let's talk about the social dilemma. So we all watched it and we all... Um, we all watched it. <laughs> <laughs> it's as far as it went. We all watched it. Yes, we did. We did watch it. I remember watching it. I watched it almost five times. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us why you watched it five times, please. Okay, guys. Just because my boss asked me to. Uh, <laughs> but um, the cruel thing is that most of these things were kind of apparent to me before. And I thought these... like Most of the things that the documentary or the docudrama is actually discussing... I thought these are also apparent to the wider public, but maybe they weren't. But I read a book called Hooked, and I was kind of aware of most of the issues with social media. Um, since I'm working quite a uh, few hours weekly with it, so <laughs> I, hope, I think it's about 37, yeah, 38 hours like <laughs> somewhere in there. I would hope you'd be working on social media. <laughs> So yeah, there were there were not so many news in it for me, right. and and I felt like it was like kind of over dramatic. So that kind of also like even though when I was trying to really listen to it, kind of removed um, or it was just bringing on too much tension, or I don't know, it was a bit sometimes um, weird for me. Maybe for me, the part when the AI uh, or the algorithm With the uh, was, yeah, oh, was 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 um, impersonated by the three guys. That was a little bit. It's the same guy. I just yeah, it's the same guy. It's the guy from... Uh, Mad Men. Yeah, what's his name? Yeah, what was his name um, as the account manager? Yeah, he sucked though. <laughs> <laughs> I think he had his problems. Pete. Pete. His name was Pete. Yeah. I just felt that it was a little bit like childish, like over explaining and mm -hmm. yeah. But anyway, the topic itself, I mean, we can definitely agree that... Um, it is addictive and it is going to affect the future generation. I mean, Chris, you have kids. What do you think about this? Oh, <laughs> Ooh, deep, deep. <laughs> going, going for the, the kid talk. Um, yeah, okay, obviously I work in social media, so I'm completely biased, but I'm also uh, very aware of the power of persuasion and the power of marketing and the power of um, all media, right? So I mean, like from the television to... Uh, print advertising to, I mean, all these things. There's a reason why we do advertising. It's because it's persuasive and it gets people to do things. It gets people to buy stuff. Um, and newspapers or media in general have always been used for both uh, economic purposes and also political purposes, right? So I know that. And I think there's a danger in all media. And now the latest iteration of the internet, which is social media, they've always been an opportunity for those who want to um, manipulate to manipulate. Now it's just happening at scale and at this speed, which of course is is and they address they address this in the social dilemma dilemma, which is of course the the big issue. And and we've actually talked about it openly in our family that children especially aren't equipped to handle this, right? The, their frontal, I think it's their frontal cortex isn't fully developed. Yeah. They don't know how to handle these things. And some adults don't even know how to handle these things. Um, I know plenty of people that are um, mentally and emotionally manipulated by how many likes they get on social media. I mean, all of us are in some ways. I mean, there's this social status thing that comes with, with those things. Uh, you know, it's why we buy most of the things that we buy in our life is why uh, we do marketing, right? We're trying to make people feel like they need this thing in their life, which they don't really. So the truth is, is that, but but for our kids, we've said, okay, not until they're 16. Uh, they also mentioned that, I thought that was really funny. Me and my wife were watching The Social Dilemma and she was like, what age do you think our kids should uh, be allowed to. And I said 16 and literally like two minutes later in the film, the, one of the guys that they were interviewing saying, yeah, our wife and my wife and us, we don't even let them until they're 16. So I thought that was a interesting age, right? High school age where they come in and, and they kind of need some social media at that point because they're not being included in certain meetups or certain things that they're using social to, to organize, you know, things in their life. And at that point, you kind of have to get in. But it's really up to us as parents. And I think that's one of the things they mention in the, in the movie, uh, in the documentary, is that parents have to be much, much better at, at teaching and leading the way on this. 
a lot of parents are just taking no responsibility. And I think that's a, a major issue. I think you need to sit down with your kids. You need to monitor what they're doing until they're adults. Then they can sort it out. They're still your kids until they're 18. So sit down, have the talk, and make sure that you understand what's going on in their lives. Um, yeah, sorry, that was a long rant. No, but. no, it's fine. <laughs> I just would like to add here that I, I totally agree um, in terms of the importance of education, but I would also say that it's not just for kids. Like, um, education should be also for people who don't know how to handle addiction. Um, yeah, that's a good point. And uh, it's somehow, for uh, for me, it's somehow like a social responsibility that uh, even... Um, I'm going to go there and say government has some role in it. Mm. Yeah, I think you're right in, in some ways because we do have things in place when it comes to addictive stuff. Yeah. Right. Gambling. We have all regulations, regulations. Basically. And we also have. So for gambling, we have that for cigarettes, for booze, for for uh, sugar. Like, for example, there's a massive sugar tax here in Denmark. Um, so there's things, the things that are addictive the government obviously like has a, a place in there. And I think also uh, they have a place on the social media as well to regulate that a bit and say, okay, because clearly these, these social platforms have purposely put in addictive content into their or addictive things into their platforms. And they're going to be regulated just like the cigarette industry was, mm. you know, 50, 60, 70 years ago. Mm. Yeah. Um, so it, that's interesting. Yeah. When it comes to our industry, I actually know um, a lot of people in advertising who feel a little bit um, bad about their job because they are not sure if they are doing the right thing. Like, right. are they contributing to manipulation? Are right. they contributing to um, brainwashing people? Right. What do you guys think of it? It's a very good question. I mean, as a social media agency owner, I think that... Um, I definitely have, we definitely have a ethical responsibility, a hundred percent. And that is why we only work with certain brands, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why we've chosen to work with certain brands. And if a certain brand came to us that was highly manipulative or wanted to be highly manipulative, we wouldn't take that. We would have a very, even if the money was amazing, we'd have a stand on that. And I mm -hmm. think it's important that, that agencies do that because like you said, People want to have ethical concerns. And I think the people that are working in this industry have to, to look inside, inside of them and say, what am I comfortable with? It's the same with lawyers. It's the same with doctors. It's the same with um, many, many people. They have to decide. Like, But if you work like for a cigarette company, you also have to have those discussions with yourself. Or, or even Coca-Cola, if you work with Coca-Cola or you work with... Um, you know, any sugary drink company or McDonald's or you work with an oil company or you work with even a pharmaceutical company, like everybody has to take in their own ethical concerns and decide, is this, am I okay with this, right? Yeah, I agree. I mean, our position is a bit different in advertising, right? Because our job is about trying to affect the opinion of large groups of people while, I don't know, maybe a doctor or someone is just taking responsibility for their own acts and, and for their own part. We are doing something different. We are trying to influence um, larger groups of people, which can be sometimes, of course, difficult to manage. Um, but I would also say that we are quite lucky here at uh, Capco because we have actually amazing clients who only want to bring... Um, and this is no kisses, guys, who want to bring positive change to the world. <laughs> to be honest, I think that's, that's quite cool. We are privileged. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But it's also setting that precedent and saying this is what we want to do. Yeah. Um, but I, I agree with you. There are some ethical concerns, right? Obviously, yeah. we're complicit in some of that. Like if we're spending money on the platforms... Right, we're helping advertisers spend money on the platforms, which is in there for increasing those platforms' ability to to um, build technology that is addictive. We are helping those things, but I would say it's 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 on the same level as all media. In some ways, it's just social media has been extremely 
detrimental and good. Yeah. And it's at a scale that is just massive at this point. So I actually yeah. found very interesting uh, the part in the documentary when they were talking about um, that it might be just like another level of uh, evolving uh, technology, yeah. like how it was with television or how it was with radio or all other kind of media. And um, it's just like we need to like catch up with the yeah. pace and then we are going to be able to um, be more mindfully adapt to it yeah. and yeah. like kind of filter what is it yeah. that we let uh, us influence ourselves into yeah. influence. I mean, I think there are already quite a few people who are practicing mindfulness in regards to social media. Uh, I also tried doing that. I don't know how much success I had in that. But um, I think it's also very interesting when they talk about like how much we developed throughout the past few years, actually technologically, while like biologically we kind of stayed just monkeys in shoes. So I think it's... it's Nice shoes, Andy. Nice shoes. I've seen your shoes today. Those, <laughs> Please those, show your shoes. Those Andy. Nikes no, are, are no. deadly. <laughs> Next time, guys. You need to keep on watching. We demand you. I, I think we should make it a segment always on. Guys, leave a comment if you want to see my shoes or not. <laughs> I would assume you don't want to, but if you do, I, you know, okay. everything for the audience. Okay, well, sorry, we went off topic there. Okay, <laughs> hit us with what we what, we're monkeys with shoes. Yeah, we are monkeys in shoes, basically, biological in in biological terms, and I think that's quite interesting to see like how these um, like persuasive technological solutions, like for example, when you pull down the feed, it starts loading and so on, can very easily affect like the central, very primitive parts of our brains to this way develop these addictive uh, behavioral patterns, right? So I think, yeah, in general, it's a, it's a big topic. And I think there are so many aspects to it. I mean, most of these companies that are running social media are some of the largest companies in the world. Yeah. Right? So if, if you think about that, I mean, that's... And they They're have so much political power and so much economic power and, and sort of can sway a lot of things. So I think... I mean, you know, um, The Four Horsemen, have you read that book from, uh, what is his name? It's eluding me right now. I can answer anyways, no. <laughs> but he talks about sort of Google, Facebook, Apple, oh, okay. and Amazon, and how they should be broken up, because they're too, they're too powerful. Yeah. Right? They got too, much, uh, too many people, too much money, too much influence over our lives, right? They need to be, to be broken up. Yeah. And I think... Um, that's also an interesting topic. I think we're going to come to those bridges pretty quickly and have to cross those and find out what do we do about these companies because yeah. they just have too much influence in the, in the world, sort of. Yeah. I agree with that, uh, that they, I don't know, in some way at least they need to be regulated, right? But I think it's also interesting to, to think about, like, for example, in yeah. TV, you only get like certain amount of time for each party. To, to, you know, yeah, yeah. to advertise so their gonna side. Be on the political side and on yeah, Facebook and I think, Instagram. And, yeah. I think it needs to be equally regulated yeah. on social media right. as well. Yeah. The regulations are just not there yet, but I think yeah. actually the movie in this sense is kind of quite a bit late because so many of the regulations and the solutions are actually in the making yeah. right in this uh, moment. Yeah. But if you're a brand... And let's go to that because that's who we talk to. That's who, like, you're a social media mm -hmm. manager at a brand. What advice would you give to them regarding these concerns with, with social media? That's a good question. Be mindful. Have a, have a moral code in place. Know your, like, have some sort of, like, moral compass on, like, a brand level, I think. Yeah. I, Where do you want to, how do you want to yeah. persuade? What are you persuading for? Um, yeah. yeah, I think that's a good way. I think it. the word that I would use here is integrity. Just as you mentioned, uh, that you as the founder of the agency has a very, um, I would say, strict view on the clients yeah. that we would like to work for. Um, it's also, it also goes for the individual employees and actually the creatives who are coming up with the concept and, and making it happen that uh, you just have like um, you cannot forget your individual responsibility yeah so it's just like having your integrity and like your mindset in the um, right place at the right place exactly yeah.